All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on for some mono red crisis. So we're going to continue with our uh, first go at playing ranked matches here at the stream. We started at gold uh, yesterday. We've been uh, we played four decks. No, I guess we played three decks yesterday, and we got three more decks today. And this is the third one here with Mono Red Krasis. After this, we're doing a donation deck. We're doing our regular league with a Teamer Monsters brew that looks pretty sweet. Um, but we're going to try this Mono Red Krasis in ranked. This is a deck we've... This was a donation deck uh, made by a viewer uh, that we played about 10 days ago or so, probably. And played it a couple of times now, maybe a week ago. And been pleasantly surprised... Uh, by how strong this deck is, we're just we're just a, a red mid range deck, kind of like just regular old mono red mid range, where red mid range doesn't really have the card advantage or like the to turn the corner in the late game, but it can get a lot of mana thanks to treasure map and even Karn Scion Reversa. So if we need to, um, we need to. Uh, have the the late game and be able to pull ahead and everything our hydroid crisis can certainly do that you know it's just one of the best cards at uh winning late games so that's what we have here we have this top end card um in our mono red deck yes it's two different colors but honestly the splash isn't really that hard you know we just play eight blue sources eight green sources and we have the treasure maps that make treasures that can help with that also or treasure map can help us find those it's not like we need you know, turn one, turn two, turn three. We don't need those colors. Even turn four, that's like the first time you can really play a Krasis as like a 2-2, two -two, but you know, we usually have other things to be doing. So uh, that's kind of what our deck's, deck's doing. We're just uh, a mid-range deck that is going really big with uh, Hydroid Krasis and filling it out with the red cards in the middle. So we'll see how well this works on the ladder. This is the the deck that I'm uh, the least confident in with playing ranked matches out of the six that we've played so far. <laughs> I guess we didn't do so well with Sultai Sanity earlier, but um, I don't know. Like the the power level on this deck overall is probably a little lower. Uh, I guess really consistency also is probably a little lower than some of the others. I don't really like... So, a question is, do we trade Daredevil for two-drop Spectacle uh, creature? And that creature... I don't really love that creature. I don't think it's... I don't think it's that good. Just two mana, two-two, you discard a card, you draw a card. Because the two-two body doesn't matter that much, and discard drawing, it's just not really worth it. Especially, like, to make that... The only, only way that card is playable is if you are reliably doing the Spectacle part where you're drawing three, where you're discarding your hand and drawing three. That is the only way where that card's playable. And we're not going to be doing that here in this deck. All right, so another question. Sorry, yeah, sorry I didn't answer yours a little bit ago. Uh, Papa, so would Arcane Adaptation work with a mass by adding armies type? Clifftop Retreat. Uh, to make them your, to make all your zombies zombie armies and add encounters to them. I don't think that works like that. I don't think you can add... I don't think you can make your... No. I don't I don't think you can make your uh, creatures into army types. Like, I don't, I don't think that's a creature type. I think that's like a, a name for a token, basically. All right, so Path of Metal just needs two creatures that have First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, or Haste to transform them. So as you can tell, Haste also. So if they have Danitha in play, and they just play a Haste creature here, you know, like a Tajik or anything like that, they would get to transform Path of Metal immediately. And Path of Metal on the other side, Metzali, is an unreal strong card. So... That is a card I'm certainly worried about, and I did not want to. So I just went ahead and shocked their creature and not 
didn't let them uh, flip the path of metal there. Now, Shalai, though, is a problem for us because we, we can't kill Shalai and we can't kill any haste creatures like a Tajik or anything also. So we just kind of have to let this happen. I am shocked our opponent is having this trade here. Absolutely shocked. I heard you had some dead things to stay dead and hit the road. I'm still pretty shocked they they let us trade there. <laughs> I don't know. Phoenix for Shalai. That's a that's a good trade. I like that trade. Wait, so so am I wrong? So it is a creature type? So it's a zombie. So you can use arcane adaptation. You're not welcome here anymore. So how does that I don't I don't even know how that works. So that just means you can pump any creature on the battlefield. Okay. I was not expecting Deafening Clarion in the Path Metal deck. Are they just going to have more? Like, I like saving Chain Whirler because usually Path Metal decks have a good, good amount of one-toughness things. Or even we can team up a Chain Whirler and a Shock together kind of thing. This is just not a path metal deck. This is a me get wrecked deck. So there goes all the treasures. I hope you've said your goodbyes already. Oh, I had not said my good my goodbyes yet, Kaya. Can it, can they come back? I haven't said my goodbyes yet. Yeah, our opponent's doing... This is my card. This is my card. They're playing Marty Legends. What's... What's Path of Metal doing in here? Who knows? Nobody. Yeah, who's the Legends deck now? Obviously, it's our opponent. They're the Legends deck. Alright, so let's attack. At banishing things. Let's attack Kaya. I would like them to block. How did you do that? Hmm. Yeah, the treasures are artifacts, this but they're not legendary. They're not legendary artifacts. Well, definitely glad we've been really patient on these shocks. We need to kill this Lyra. Was that dear to you? Now it's dearly departed. <laughs> Please. Dematerializing? Huh. Any cards you'd switch around your e-tron to help in the current metagame? Honestly, I don't know, Tin Man. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I've been just a standard player since last fall, and so the last time I was playing Modern was before Arclight Phoenix. So I honestly just don't know. I am just a standard player now. Standard streamer. That's that's my job.
Attack. Hopefully Chain Whirler finishes this, this off. No, I don't I don't play any commander EDH. Um <laughs> Garna Sweet. Other creatures you control have haste. Okay. Okay. Give that thing haste. So yeah, Commander, like, we talked about earlier about how I'm planning on moving back to to Texas, like, where I have friends and family and everything, and, and I do have a group of friends that really likes playing Commander, and then whenever I go back home, I'll likely be putting a Commander deck together and, uh, and having one then. Yeah, these angels are tough. Angels are certainly tough. That's a really good card to draw. Would I rather just play like a 9 9 Krasis, though. Yeah. Basically, I want to have more defense right now, because if my if I just played the Hellkite, and then my opponent killed the Krasis, I don't have good blocks on either Aurelia or Lyra, because they'd both be five power. Like I'd have a four four and a five five, and that would be a five six and a five five first strike. Like so, I don't have good blocks on either. And they get if they block if they get to attack with both angels, then Path of Metal flips, and then they get to start killing us with that, and everything. And it's just and we'd have to like chump block with like the Krasis like. Basically, if I just play Hellkite and then they would kill my Krasis, I would be looking at likely taking lethal or or having to make really bad chump blocks kind of thing. Bad trades. And getting this other large flyer out is safer for me. And they did have that removal spell. Oh yeah, if there's another Urza's Ruinous Blast, we're dead. If they f ever flip this path of metal, we're probably dead. This has been a pretty sweet game, though. This has been a pretty sweet game. Plus two, plus two. 
Please. All right. So. Need to. Shark. Or sorry. Shock. Arvard. Not baby shark. Arvard. Baby shark. Now we get to take over. Boom, boom. That was a crazy game. That was a crazy game. Yeah, they had... What, did they only have five mana that whole time? Whew. All right, what do we want to do? Do I want to starve extinction here? Kill that path of metal that gets flipped? Some bane fires, lava coils. <sighs> I don't know. So Daredevil, they had what like Clarion, they had a Contempt. And obviously there was a Ruinous Blast, but I'm not gonna really want to Daredevil blast. I don't even know what I want to do here at the sideboard, honestly. Uh, Shock doesn't seem spectacular, but it, it did just a lot of work for us. But I guess Coils would be better. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll play Coils and a Bane Fire instead of the Shocks. And an Explosion. We can copy their Deafening Clarion, or their Brassus Contempt. Yeah, Star's probably pretty reasonable. It's possible I should be getting rid of a Direfully Daredevil for a Star. Bloodfast. What is that thing? All right, let's start attacking. They want to just sit back and pay life to draw cards. We're going to have to take that life and uh, make that resource a little thinner. New plan. <laughs> New plan. We're getting the Phoenix. Go! <laughs> well. Alright, down to nine. They do have a Dawnbringer, we need another land. Ooh, Blackblade Reforged. 
So it costs three mana to equip to a legendary creature. That thing's going to actually kill me. I guess I should have just coiled that. Alright, I guess I should have coiled the Alenda. Just sack your, sack your Dawnbringer right now. So they're going to sack it in response and so I could target the other thing. Yeah, we're pretty dead. I guess I just should not have attacked with the Phoenix. Or really, I just should have coiled the Alenda. But I guess if I would have coiled the Alenda, I could I could not have killed that L Lyra. Hopefully no deafening clarion. Or Kaya. Bleh. I will fight with honor. I will return. <laughs> well chosen. Karn's like, I will fight with honor. Half a second later, Karn's exiled. Uh, I will return. Just wait. Well, Black Blade Reforged is definitely good against the red deck. Let's get a couple of these Cinder Vines in. To get two Daredevil for two Cinder Vines. It's reasonable. I like having treasure map right away on turn two. <laughs> wow. Saying I'm looking like an elder dragon from I'm getting wrecked by this black blade. Dang. Oh yeah. I should bring in that star. I don't think my our opponent's playing Singleton. No, they played they played different Liras the first game.
keep this explosion as we may have <clears throat> may have the ability to draw a whole lot of cards with that thing. Our actions determine the course of history. All right, see you, Karn. You did good. You got us one random card. The worst out of two cards. And traded with the contempt. Farewell, and thank you for the lesson. Good choice. Okay, I'll take the the rip on Craig. I mean, we need a green mana for a crisis. We don't have to use treasure now. For it, that's good. Gonna lava coil that thing. <clears throat> Save explosion for a bigger creature like Lyrodon Bringer that we can't coil. Says, I tried to tell Todd that Black Blade was good, but he didn't see the light. And now he sees the point. He has lifelink. We'll run out of lands eventually, but you know, really glad we have this explosion here. Next turn we can explosion for six, and the longer we get to wait with it, the better. Oh, cool, BMBK. Yeah, glad you liked the Thousand Year Storm deck. Took a couple more defies. Ow. So we're gonna have anything better to do than cast this explosion for six? Alright, I'll kill that thing. Oh wait. I can't even kill that thing. Hmm. All right, waiting a turn. Ooh. No, I, I clicked on this box. I didn't want them to go to combat. All right, whatever. It worked. Five, six, seven. Hopefully all these cards can beat the four cards they have in hand, and this Arv Arvid the Cursed. Hopefully. Unclear if they can. Ooh. That's kind of cool. Strike that down. And so I already just have too many cards in hand. So I don't really want to play a big crisis because we just already have too many cards. Try to empty my hand as much as possible first. Hooday! Getting that resub in here. Welcome back, Hooday. Thanks, Tyler. Alright, what do we.
we have here? 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Alright, discard. You, 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 you. Get rid of a bunch, bunch of these lands. Our sub battle countdown is down to an even hundred. 28 months. So we're just at 13. Now we have 14 mana. So if opponent doesn't block this, then it's lethal. Or did I math wrong? I guess, I guess maybe I math wrong. Six, I, th yeah, just math wrong. Did that math really quickly? Six, eight, ten, fourteen. Because this, this will put us down to twelve mana, and then being at thirteen. So no, it's not lethal. Should have just done that first and attacked with this Phoenix, I suppose. I advise that I'll make use of that later. I think we're doing okay though. Still be lethal next turn. Unit you know they have Star of Extinction here. Well, I guess if they have Star of Extinction here, it's not lethal, but yeah, we're gonna be fine. All right, three damage to each creature. That's a start. Now an eight damage to each creature. That was a good game. That was just a good match. I guess, yeah, just the that match. That was a that was a good one. That was a fun match. GGS. Hey, Saishu, good match. Yeah, that was a cool one right there. Asper Legends up on YouTube. I'll take this one. Esper Legends up on YouTube right now. It's almost ready.
That's a lot of stuff that our opponent's doing over there. This one's not looking good for the home team here. Not looking so good at all. Thanks, Thug Funny. Oh, you were sitting on Urza's Ruinous Blast that last turn? Oh, we or that last game we couldn't get it off because yeah, we were killing each creature, just couldn't untap with that creature. Yeah, no, f no offense taken, Rex. I understand wanting the Black Blade to win that for sure. Yeah, so the new YouTube thumbnails are all um, Yud. Yud's been making them. They look great. Get the one that's not chosen. Down to eight. Mm. Dante Vanguard's gonna be tough. Can we draw a Chain Whirler? No, but Phoenix isn't bad. It's not bad. No, no real plans for Azorius aggro right now. Uh, the, for us playing Azorius aggro, we're, looks like we're playing against it right now. And we'll see if we can actually stabilize. I, I kind of doubt it. I feel like my opponent has Venerate Luxodon, but they want to keep the pressure going. So I, I want to keep their I want to keep less permanence on the battlefield for for Snubhorn Sentry. I want to make Snubhorn Sentry as small as you know. I don't want it to be a three three basically. So that's why I blocked the. Aspirin. Paisley ties? Uh oh. What do you mean by Paisley ties? Like. Like Easter color type things? I guess I'm not familiar with that word. It's a texture. This block, we go to one. Or if I make this block, we go to three. I'll make this one. Tayrod says, I've, I've been having a blast with this Mono Red Krasis deck for a week. Really fun. That's awesome. Cool, Tayrod. That's, that's, uh, that's the goal of the stream, to have all these different types of decks that the 
y'all find it enjoyable and all right crisis for four over bane fire marshal yeah if I go bane fire marshal this turn then if they draw a removal spell for the phoenix if they draw like conclave tribunal I lose Because I'd only be at three. But this way, now if they draw a removal spell for Phoenix, I am still basically dead, but not actual dead. So okay, I don't I don't think I have a f it's like flowery kinda. I don't think I have any of those. And no, I don't actually really have any white aggro. Uh, I have um, black white, we have like a black white aristocrats deck, um, or black white angels isn't isn't exactly aggro. The Orzov angels we played it yesterday, but I like the deck a whole lot, and it and it has it has a, some real aggressive starts. You know, it has like a lot of two drops um, and a Johnny's and things like that. I think that'd be probably the closest to a white aggro. Um, you can find that video on the YouTube channel from yesterday. It has the deck list on there and everything. I'm not sure if zombies will get a zombie decks will get a huge boost from Spark. The thing is, they're they're definitely getting a boost, but the thing is, is standard as a whole is going to be getting a lot better. And I'm not sure. Oh, I just had I just had lethal there. Oh well, we'll just kill our opponent next turn. Sorry, I was just talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could have just you know, attacked for eight, gone Bane Fire upstairs. We'll just do that next turn. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so basically all of standard in general, like all of standard is going to be getting better. And so I don't know if the Zombies deck's getting better, if it will be enough. That's not a bad idea, BMB. Get a PO box. I think, yeah, I'm. I'll get a, yeah. That's something for whenever I I move down to Texas in like June. When I move back home, get a. Get a PO box for, just signing cards and things like that. I know that's something that people have asked for. They like me to, to sign stuff, and so I can. I can have that. Hmm. All right, so mono white aggro. That was not looking like we we're going to be winning that, but they. Drew a couple of lands there at some inopportune times. So if we play these cannonades and the extra coils. I mean, what's I mean? I guess Karn and Treasure Map are probably my worst cards. Daredevil doesn't do anything but be a first strike blocker, but that's still not bad. Like the first strike blocker, that's it's honestly not that bad. And could just play an extra Bane Fire and an Explosion for like later on, later game things. We got lots of early game stuff. It's basically just like four mana to kill a kill a Benelish Marshal here. Or if they play a Johnny, we can kill the Johnny with the Bane Fire. Yeah, Banefire is not great, but I think I like it more than anything else in my sideboard. I don't really like anything in the sideboard. <sighs> Cinder Vines, I guess, is kind of an option to take out enchantments if they like start Conclave Tribunaling all my stuff.
it'll be interesting. Yeah, y'all are talking about like how mono white, mono blue aren't really getting anything from the next set. It'll be interesting to see what they want to do with the man base for mobilized district. Because having a creature land is amazing. The problem is, is trying to cast the creature or have the creature land with like the triple cost the triple cost cards with like Benelish Marshall. Like I wonder if Mono White can just move away from Benelish Marshall, just have like history and unbreakable formation and I don't know, other things like that. War boss is for when your opponents are not playing creatures. If they don't play creatures, you you bring in war boss because then war boss gets through and deals a lot of damage, and then you have from less removal spells that you need in your deck because your opponent doesn't have creatures. Hope we draw this land and we can chain whirler these X ones away. I don't really want to use the lightning strike right now. But yeah, having access to a creature land, that's that's really big game. Yeah, then you have Gideon would be is a great cyborg card for mono white for sure. Or you can maybe even just play that instead of Benelish Marshall. Ugh. We did not get that land. Man, land for Chain Whirler would have been great. I, f I feel like... I don't know, my opponent kind of thought... I don't know, they may have Spell Pierce. But Chain Whirler would just be better than the Fiery Cannonade anyway, because they sack the Bodyguards to keep these other things alive. Yeah, the Ratchet Bomb land is, is really good too. Like, those lands are, are really good, and they're printing them at an interesting time because our mana is so good that everybody's playing, like, three-color decks and stuff like that. And then if we have um, really good colorless lands, it, you know, incentivizes you to not go that way. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for the uh, Twitch... Prime sub. Thank you very much. Getting our sub battle countdown down to 99. Welcome back for the fifth month in a row. Yeah, it's possible the bomb land could go into Grixis to answer possible answer problematic enchantments. I could see that, like playing one. You have like room for like one colorless land. You know, I have the Arch of Arazka right now. That could be the bomb land. I could see that. Yeah, I think I think I'd like that. Maybe a second one in the board for enchantments. Maybe not. Maybe just Ugin. Ugin's an answer too, but an expensive one at six mana. But that's another answer that Grixis can have now to enchantments. But yeah, I kind of like that land. That is true that the colorless land is definitely worse with New Bolas because New Bolas does require five 
It has five pips. It has five specific colors that it needs. Yeah, I think... Yeah, these are so many crazy good cards. I think War of the Sparks is going to have a pretty big impact. We don't usually see the 7th set in Standard have very much impact. Because, you know, it's only raising... You know, like, there's already six sets in Standard, so it only adds, you know, like, 16% more to the metagame. And so it doesn't usually change very much. But I don't feel like that's going to be the case with War of the Spark. I don't know what this block's about, or what that attack's about, but I'm going to block. Okay, yeah, you only have one Lazav. You can just play... play something, just play, like, another Mortify. Play something else that costs, like, two or three mana. Play like another Discovery or, you know, play like a, a Rona, play another Dovin. Uh, you know, something else. It's gotta cost at least, it's gotta cost it either two or three mana though. But besides that, you, you can pick. You can play a Duressor and a Gate if you want. Wouldn't it be cool if every seventh set was an event set? I feel like this one's probably just kind of special. That this is something they've been building to for, for a long time. I think we can outrace our opponent. That's what we got. Let's get a 3 3 crisis in play. Yeah, we can shock plus copy shock, you know, so we could could deal four there, but that only puts them down to one. Yeah, yep, that's exactly what War of the Sparks doing. It's giving upgrades everywhere. I think the then we have the core set next set, which core sets just kind of like there's not gonna be a huge change. Like whatever the, the metagame is after War of the Spark here, the course the the eighth set, the core set won't change it a, a ton. Core sets just kinda of fill in holes and things like that. Um and just kind of, just kind of smooth over metagames and everything, makes makes the makes things you know gives gives like more answers for for things that need to be answered and and things like that. Um, but then our fall set, I b believe they said is going to be something, some place that we've never been to before, some new set that we've never been to before. So I just played that fiery candidate to clear off that one blocker. There's a lot of different ways I could have played that to win. A lot of different things I could have done. I mean, I all I had to do was just do the shock, copy shock, and deal four upstairs, and they can only block one. You know, they can only block two creatures anyway. So like, a lot of different things to do to win. I just kind of wanted to cast the fiery candidate, to be honest. All right, 
Mono Red Crisis, 2 0. So, where are we at now? We're in Platinum Tier 3. Cool. Work on our way through Platinum. We've won uh, six of the last seven with Esper Legends and Mono Red Crisis. So getting our, working our way through Platinum here. Hey, good game, Hellfire. We had a real strong hand that that uh, third game. Chain Whirler, real good. Time to mulligan. This is kind of like the tough part here of scrying before knowing what your opponent's doing. Like, if they're playing a control deck, I definitely want this treasure map. But if they're playing an aggro deck, I don't want the treasure map. I guess they're playing, like, the aggro deck. We're probably not winning. I don't know. I'm just going to keep this treasure map. Let's see if it's control. We haven't played against control in a little while. Kind of feeling like it's control. But now it's looking like some Draconis, or I guess this is going to be Phoenix. Any reason not to run at four of the Nickel Bowl's Dragon God? Not that I know of right, right away. I will be starting with four for sure. Card looks incredible. Where is, where's my hand waving? Where's my high emote? Wait, I don't... Do I not have, like, the high emote anymore? I'm not seeing it. I was going to say... High back. There, Kazu, you have it. Why don't I have it on my screen? Huh, that's weird. It's just it's it's not there on my screen. I have the 21 emotes, and I'm supposed to have 22. I can probably type it in. What? I don't have it. I just typed it out. It didn't work for me. I can see everybody else's. Heck, this card's going to be good. So you could see mine? Huh. From from on my side it just says TS MTG high. There's a Phoenix. I do want land right now. So, am I just playing a big crisis next turn? The new Domri looks really, really strong. I think it looks a lot better than the four mana Domri. the Hellkite. I'm definitely playing all of these to be bigger than Lava Coil. It's one thing I'm for sure doing. Call this deck Krasis and Friends. Got a couple of those out of their hand. Four. I guess maybe I should have kept that stomping ground, but I have to shock in the stomping ground. We've 
six. Remember when I knew a boxer, baby? Yeah, our, our bird's a little bigger than their bird. They have been drawing in quite a few lands, which is probably good for us. That's six in play, a seventh over there. They're looking for more birds. Do they acquire a bird? Bird acquired. Well, I'll take that trade. I feel like that's pretty good for us. Let's see, we're down to 11, though. Probably pretty good for us. Boom. And then I'll lightning strike one of these phoenixes during combat. If they're attacking with both. If they like find a third coil and coil my phoenix. Uh, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't really mind if they have a shock here to kill this rekindling phoenix. I don't really mind that. This should be game. Uh, probably a control deck for Bolas. But it could fit in mid-range also. I mean, it's... It can fit in either one, kind of like, you know, similar, basically similar to Teferi. You can put Teferi in a mid-range deck at the top end. You can put, put it in control deck. But it... Five, six, seven, eight... Yeah, how proliferate works, you add anything that has a counter on it, you may add another counter. So it could be like planeswalkers have counters. You know, they have loyalty counters. So when you pro proliferate, you you can add another counter to the to the planeswalker. Any creature with a 1/1 one -one counter on it, you know, like a a jade light ranger that just explored for example that has a 1/1 one -one counter on it, you can put an additional 1/1 one -one counter on it when you proliferate. Um, anything like that. Any permanent on the battlefield that has a counter when you proliferate, you may add another counter. So that's that's how proliferate works. Proliferate. All right, coil in. More coil. Expansion. Copy their coils. Copy their charter cores. Let's get rid of Karn. Let's get rid of Chain Whirler. Too many shocks and lightning strikes. I, still I guess maybe I am playing these chain whirlers. Maybe I'm playing war boss. War boss is not as good against shock.
I don't know, I'll just play some Chain Whirlers. I'll play some Chain Whirlers. Let's do it. Let's get them out early, make our opponent Lava Coil or Chain Whirler. And then they don't have Lava Coil for the Phoenix. No, Cinder Vines. is not something you really want. Well, Cinder Vines on exactly turn two can do some work for you. You know, can certainly do some work of like dealing some damage on exactly turn two. It's the kind of card that usually um, usually they can just deal more damage with Phoenixes and Drakes than like and kill you before the Cinder Vines kills them. So like while while the Cinder Vine looks like it has appeal, most of the time it's just just like meretricious. It doesn't actually have any value. You don't want a card that like you know, you draw it on like turn four, turn five, it's just it's way too late. You need your things affecting the battlefield. And Cinder Vines doesn't do that at all. Have to deal with their permanence. So they would just rather have their Arc Light Phoenix on the, in the graveyard than in play. It's interesting. Ah. Right. <laughs> Who is this? Michael Tolcher, sooner or later? It's like, right after that happened, the lyrics of the song is, now you learned the hard way. That's funny. Uh, I don't think there's anything new in the latest arena update. I think it was just some consistency patches or something like that. Yeah, Cinder Vines is for Wilderness Reclamation decks. That's what Cinder Vines is, is in the deck for. Destroy Wilderness Reclamations. And then it can do some things like, you know, against gates, may, you need to kill like the guild summit or whatever. Definitely want to keep waiting on this crisis, make it large and above a lava coil. No, it's not, it's its only purpose isn't just to destroy enchantments, because it, against wilderness reclamation decks. That damn, you know, just staying on the battlefield and dealing damage to them against those Nexus decks is is really important too. There's there's not really anything better, I guess. Also to answer, there's there's really not anything better for that matchup. I hope that's their only entrancing melody. I don't want them entrancing melodying my stuff anymore. Right, that's better than entrancing melody. I 
Ooh. Their hand is good. They're discarding Charter Course. They definitely have a good hand. So one, two. So if I take take Melody, cast Melody, uh, I'm a little short of melodying away the Phoenix. I can coil the Phoenix. We're gonna just play another five five. And wait till next turn. Alright, five five countered. Yep, and now we get to steal it. Yep, got rid of their counter spell. So the green finale. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card. CMC XLS put it onto the battlefield. I don't know. I don't I don't feel like these finale cards are, are that good. Team. No, I'll just take it. So yeah, we could have Lava Coiled and Chain Whirler. I'll just take it. I like having a Phoenix. Yoink. They remind me quite a bit of Okay, well, got really punished. Should have lava coiled. They remind me quite a bit of Um Oh. Can I just finish this game? Sorry, of Electro Dominance from the previous set. I assume you got a shock over here, right? You got a shock? There we go. And we have the mana to cast shock, don't we? Yes, we do. Flea Daredevil doing some work. All right, three and zero with Mono Red Crisis. The games this deck plays are pretty long. There's some long games. We are now in Platinum Two. Gone from Platinum 4 to Platinum 2 in the last, uh, that's five, eight matches, the last eight matches. Yeah, I just got a message about an update too. Yeah, I just saw it on, on the screen also. Figure I'll do that later.
<laughs> I did have... I did have a good hand. It makes it a lot easier. There we go. We got our one mountain. Oh, that's... That's why we've been playing pretty good. We, we switched our mountains out and got some good mountains in this deck. Instead of the ones we had before. That's certainly what's helping us right now. See, look at that. Treasure map was like the best card to possibly draw against Esper Control here. Nice. The crueler the opponent, that's, wants something banished. Sweet. That's my avatar. But that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I do. I play Caius. I don't know if Kaya is actually going to do anything. I don't think I really have to worry about Kaya. I hope you've said your goodbyes already. Well, I haven't. Ooh, Kaya is going to take my treasures. Yeah, Kai's gonna take my treasures. That's something. <laughs> oh, but you can't hit me again. I'm known for my excellent timing. I'm really good at banishing things. Hurry! Please don't have any gate. You want me to phase you out of time? Only time will tell. That's all he talks about is time. Well, I don't have time for you, Teferi. Get in the graveyard. Don't come back. No more Teferis. Don't do it. Don't play another one. You're not welcome here anymore. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No. Uh, that's bad. Let's slow this down. We need to move quickly. That card's hard to beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kill. You can get to exile my phoenix now. Congratulations. I am proud. Now it's dearly departed. No time for a break. <laughs> well, can you use a bane fire? Nope, and a lava coil. Dang, our hand was good. Just second to fairy. Second to fairy's tough. So I think this is like a matchup for Cinder Vines. It's really like what like do we want Cinder Vines to just deal a bunch of damage to them over time? Or do we want lightning strikes that can kill Thief of Sanities? And also kind of go go towards planeswalkers. And 
It's only at three damage. You can't do more. That's like the one, the one kind of tricky card choice here. Guess I could cut a couple chain whirlers and go three and three. Chain whirler is not really that great. All right, let's try this. All right, Mono Red Crisis, you can do it. Not a bad start. If Warboss gets to stick around, we will be looking great. This is all about that Warboss. All about that war boss. That war base. Well, at least we got the 1-1. One, one. That's good. my phoenix just to get absorbed. Two turns we could have, we could like copy and absorb. Cinder Vines did good. Did, did two damage to the opponent and trade with a card. It's not bad. Absorb and Kaya's Wrath. I'll take Absorb. I assume they're taking Phoenix, but maybe they're scared of the Bane Fire. More treasure maps. More treasures. We're gonna throw a huge fireball at our opponent's face. We gotta find some treasure first. That's the rules. It's a good one. I don't know, we're we're doing pretty good this game, Jerska. <laughs> yeah, this one one goblin. You know it It could use a pay raise. So 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. choice next saturday night to watch avengers 4 there you go i don't know when i'm gonna watch it yet yeah i don't know when i'm gonna watch it yet it's kind of unfortunate timing that it's you know it comes out after war of the spark releases on on arena here because while i want to i definitely want to go watch the movie but i don't want to like take a day off because i want to um you know i want to be playing like there's so many cool cards to play for more of the spark i'm probably going to do i'm probably going to just do like the tuesday again like last time because they have ha half price tickets on tuesday and on that tuesday uh, just stream earlier again instead of doing three to ten and do like noon to seven so still stream the seven hours but just stream it earlier and then um, go see the movie after that now definitely not Thursday we're Thursday is the first day that war of the sparks gonna be on arena I'm gonna be doing a 12-hour stream on Thursday Hmm. And treasure map is one of my better cards here in this matchup. Yeah, um not like not like two days from now Thursday, but nine nine days from now Thursday is when War of the Spark will be on Arena. So the 25th. All right, I need to I need to activate this treasure map and get another land. Need to make sure we hit land drop next. Hey, what's up, Horatio? What do you think of the new god cards in War of the Spark? I don't think they're quite as strong as the old ones. Let's see them there. I don't know. Those those kind of cards are pretty... They're pretty difficult to... really gauge until you start playing with them. And see them... Oh, okay. They, they said no to the Thief of Sandy over there. See they see them like on the battlefield and you know see them interact with the other cards and everything. From a, from strictly from a rate standpoint, they are certainly good enough for standard. It's just how valuable is like the put it back in your library going to be? I'm not sure because it's like you know in a few turns is that like your top deck that you're going to want? I don't know. All of them except for the blue one cost five, and there is a ton of competition at the five mana slot in standard. As long as Esper doesn't draw Teferi, it's a lot easier when they don't have Teferi. I had to say something. I had to just, you know. I won't hide from the world. I had to say you something. know what? I'm not done yet. It looks like they're waiting to be able to have Teferi and Absorb available. I do want land.
Unless we get this Teferi out of there. It's only a matter of time. No more Teferis. I can't handle the second one. That's how game one happened, is we had the burn spells for the first one, game one, and the, but then they had the second also. So I'm going to have to use a treasure to Daredevil Thought Erasure here, but I'm, I'm throwing War Boss out as like a as like a test subject. Oh yeah, I could Mortify as Kanta. That actually sounds great. Yeah, I guess that's better than Thought Erasure. So that cost two treasures. That's certainly worth it. <clears throat> Daredevil's great. Just the Jellyfish Hydra Beast I wanted to see. Ah. So next turn we'll just, you know, we'll have like these two lands that are already tapped. We'll have those untapped next turn. We'll be able to craze this for more next turn. Um, and it's possible we draw another land drop like that. So just going to go with the Phoenix this turn and wait till next turn for the Krasis. There's that Absorb that they've had the whole time. That we got to play around by playing that War Boss first. So we're looking at 3, 6, 7. If we draw a land, it'll be 8. If not, I'll use a Treasure for 8. Just hoping not a Thought Erasure. Please don't make me discard this Krasis. Please, kind Esper opponent, don't make me discard this Hydroid Crisis. It's just a Jellyfish Hydra Beast. That's a that's all. Rude. Trust me, you'll thank. Hurry. Ooh. Well, I guess I'm going to just try this, right? Just try to kill this Teferi. Let's kind of check to see if they have cast down or not. I don't think they have cast down. I'm gonna get greedy. How these how fast those are going through, I didn't think they had it. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Good job, Hellkite. So two Teferi's down. So three, six, eight. Woo. Wow, 
Wow, this Hydro Crisis card's pretty good. It's pretty good. And that is a victory. Treasure Map was like the... It's the card that kind of gets overlooked that is just really strong. You know, we got to do so much scrying, draw a bunch of extra cards. It also gives us an extra land drop, you know, so it also turns into a rampant growth where we got that extra mana, which is really good with Krasis. Um, yeah, treasure map, really good. GG's. All right, so 4-0 and today with Mono Red Krasis. Perfect record. It's already almost 9 o'clock. We only got like a little over an hour left in the stream tonight. So uh, we got another deck to play. Also, the team are monsters. So i uh, going to go ahead and finish up here with Mono Red at Krasis tonight at 4-0. That's a good, it's a good FNM, you know, going 4-0 through FNM, defeating Esper Control there in the last round. And yeah, our deck, our deck was pretty impressive. Um, yeah, just Krasis, Treasure Map, real good for the late games. You know, we got Chain Whirler and a ton of early red removal for the aggro decks, which is pretty nice. Phoenix is just kind of the glue that holds it together that's just good against everybody and has incredible 3D art as well. <laughs> Look at those little talents that it has. What do you think about the play of saving all the mana for Hellkite? Then if they have cast down, you could shoot two damage at Teferi. So in that play, so we could have activated Hellkite. You know, so, so you're saying like play Hellkite and be able to activate Hellkite. Then that two damage plus the three damage on the battlefield could kill Teferi. If we do that, so what? Are we, if we play Hellkite pre-combat, they know to cast down the Daredevil... And basically just either way, like if we if we try to do that and they just cast down the Daredevil, you, you know, then we, we're still not killing the Teferi, basically. I feel like if if they had a cast down, they could save Teferi. If they wanted to, either way. And so I wanted to just use the rest of my turn a lot better. You know, be able to crack those treasures, draw more cards, get some more land drops and that kind of stuff. Just use my turn a lot better than uh, trying to, uh, ping the hell, ping the Teferi with Hellkai, just, just attacking. I liked that. Yeah, that's, that's Mono Red Krasis. It looked good. We didn't, we didn't play against Sultai in those four matches. Um, Sultai can be a struggle, uh, but we got the Star of Extinction in there. It's not always a struggle, you know, like, you know, like you have like Daredevils for like all their contempts and cast downs and everything. And, um, Phoenix is difficult for them to deal with. If you get a whole lot of mana, you get to Hydro Crisis for a bunch. And, you know, we've been okay against Sultai, but that's like a match I don't really want to face with the deck. I think Sultai's probably, I mean, as y'all know, I, I I have really high regards to Sultai. So when playing other mid range decks, uh, it's not usually what I want to do is play against Sultai as other mid range decks. But, but we face the other ends of the spectrum. We face, you know, like Mono Whites and Esper Controls and stuff like that. And that's. We're a little more comfortable with this deck with those kind of matchups. All right, so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching. Mono Red